what should my website look like? And I'm like, dude, fuck a website. All right, no one cares about that. Present an offer, sell the offer. I, in a year and a half, my website, Cleanups Cleaning, has never got a single clean on it. We've SEO'd it, we've done all, doesn't matter. The ads matter, the prospecting. It's us evolving, growing and knowing. Wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where Welcome to another episode of the No Degree Podcast. I want to personally thank you for tuning in and supporting our show. If you haven't yet, hit that follow or subscribe button. I encourage you, don't keep this to yourself. Share these inspiring stories with your friends. Invite them to subscribe and connect with us on social media. And today I have a guest and former client, Ryan Lund. And let me tell you, this man is a hustler. Even before the podcast, this man is closing deals. So Ryan, what do you do? Yeah, what's going on, man? I appreciate you having me on. Uh, So uh, I do software sales uh, as the day job. And then, you know, I like to call it my after hour hustle, right? Uh, I run a cleaning business as well as teach a a course with over 156 students in it right now on how to run a remote cleaning business. Man, that's freaking amazing. And you've worked at pretty interesting companies too, right? You've worked at some very well-known companies. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I started uh, a fairly traditional route. I sold cars for a while and that was that was all right. Then I got into AT&T and thought I hit it big because I worked for a big company, you know, and I was yeah. pulling in big money, which wasn't big money, uh, but it seemed like big money, right? Uh, and then we broke into software, saw, you know, startup software. And then that's when I met you because I went to an even bigger company with the HubSpot for a while there. So it's uh, it's been fun, man. It's been a good good ride. So what's your blueprint for success? Dude, honestly, man, um, I fail fast, right? Like 100%. Um, I, I go at like 200%. I want to, I want to find my, my loss as quick as possible. Cause I know the win is right around the corner and always having a, a solid support system, man. I feel like talking to people like you and, you know, some of the other sales leaders or just leaders in life, right. Have been extremely successful for helping me guide the future of what I want. Now that that's a great blueprint for success. So now let's take it back. Man, how is high school like for you? And would you want to be in high school? Dude, I went to a small high school. I think we had the biggest graduating class of like 50. And that was after three dropped out, you know? Uh, so like we was big time in it. Before that, it was like 15. So we <laughs> had a big, big class. Uh, I played basketball. Uh, wasn't the best. Way better now. You know, played. I was rocking junior high 20. Or, I'm sorry, JV 20, 30 points. And then varsity like five, right? So Big curve there. I played in the band. Yeah. I did everything, but I was definitely like not the most popular. I was I was more on the nerd side. That was just a big guy, right? Um, but I wanted to be, dude. I wanted to be a a, a marine biologist yeah. for the longest time. Um, it was something about like I loved animals and then like the water and stuff. Like I was like, oh, this sounds like great. And then. I realized I fucking hate reading. Uh, I hate studying. I don't learn that way, right? I uh, got into sales. I, I tell everyone I went to college for like four classes and sold my first few cars and got my first comp check of like 1500 bucks. I was like, fuck school. I can make my own money. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that's amazing. So you got that first comp check. How was that? Uh, I mean, I was 18 at the time um, and it was blown on unmentionables um in about three days right so it, it drove me to want to sell more and then i you know i quickly realized that like uh i gotta do better so uh yeah that's kind of how like the path but yeah i found out i was good at sales man i found out that i was good at talking to people and then getting what i wanted out of that person whether it was buying the car or whatever the situation was so it was a fun transition. Now, how long did you stay in car sales? Just shy of a year, actually. So what happened was I started getting lazy and I found out that I could go detail cars at a flag rate. And I worked at a Dodge dealership, right? So what I would do is I would come work in the morning and I would go to service, right? So I would go to service and find people who were dropping their cars off for like major service issues. Right. And go walk them around the lot and show them the new ones. Right. Oh, you've had this Jeep five years. Let me show you a new one. Right. So then whenever the service guy would text me and say, hey, it's like a six thousand dollar repair. Right. I'd be like, hey, this is an expensive repair. Let's buy a new car. So like 
I got lazy with that, but it was smart at the same time. And then I, I talked about the detail, like the portering the cars. I would come in on Sundays for like three hours and I found out that a new car would pay me two flag hours. It took me 10 minutes to prep a new car at 25 bucks an hour. I would go prep seven cars a day, right? It take, I'd be out in like an hour and a half, man. I literally was peeling plastic and spraying it down with a hose and putting it on the front lot, right? Then I just yeah. got tired of working myself too much and AT&T popped up. And so I took it. I got to be home. All right, cool. So how was the transition to AT&T? It was fun because it became more transactional, right? In a car lot, you may only talk to three or four people a day. And that's on a really busy day, right? At AT&T, dude, I was literally, I'd stand by the door, right? As soon as someone come in, I'd open them and then we'd go, open and go. And I'd walk them out and I'd sit on the door. So I went from four customers a day to about 10 to 15, right? So it it, it was fun in, in that sense. But I was only, dude, I was only in rep for like six months. And then I got moved up to management. Wow. What, what made you move up to management so quickly? Dude, I think it's because when you're younger, right? And, and it's kind of this whole idea of remote work wanting to go away. I think we, I saw an article the other day that talked about how like Gen Zers want to go to office and stuff like that, right? I think it's romanticized, man. I'm sure it is. It is. You, yeah. They haven't been in an office long enough to understand. Dude, let me tell you the fact that I like this is my work computer. That's my work like for my sales job. And then I could take a break and then hit my Xbox up, right? Yeah. The fact that like, I thought that I wanted to be in a cubicle because growing up, right? It was like yeah. a cubicle or going working in the streets and doing, you know, like yeah. construction. I didn't want to do that. I'm, I'll burn, bro. I'm not, I'm not yeah. be out there, right? I wanted to stay in the office. And I think the manager thinks the same thing. You always think as the manager is the more successful person, right? When the reality is like, they're kind of not like, I, I went to management because I was like, oh, I don't have to sell anymore. Oh, my gosh. But now I have to manage. And now I'm managing grown adults. I was 20, 25 at the time, dude. I was managing people like 20 years older than me that had way more life experience and knew more. And I got knocked down a peg real quick. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, eye opening. And then I got back to sales as fast as I could. It took about four or five years. But, yeah, it. It's kind of how that worked out. Yeah. And, and it's tough sometimes managing older people because the, you don't know a lot about personalities and all that. Well, at that point, they're already set. They're already kind of set in their ways. They've been doing it for so long. Right. And then I have to come through and be the asshole to say, well, that's wrong. Do this. And I had a lot of issues in the beginning. But over time, I come to find out that like predisposed notion I had of management was all wrong. What were some of the predisposed notions that you have that you kind of changed? That I had to be super professional all the time. Dude, like I would, I would go to work, man, and I always wore the polo, yeah. right? Like I always was was sitting up straight. You wouldn't sit me see me sitting in chairs. I don't know the last time I went to an AT and T store, but they all sit in the chairs now and they just wait for people, you know. And I was just so anal about it. I'd be like, nah, stand up, blah blah blah, you know. And I just realized that like that's not the move, man. Like that's. That's not it. And I can get more accomplished by just being a down to earth person. And then I can have that professional conversation from being down to earth. And it's helped me transition into the roles I do today. Cause man, I, I deal with people that run small startups all the way up to like, you know, 500 person companies, right? I'm talking to C levels and suit and ties while I'm sitting here with my kids toys in the background, you know, like, it's just it's it's perspective and how you position yourself and then handle the situations and it it's crazy that I thought I had to be in a suit and tie all the time and the reality is I normally wear these hanging t-shirts I get five for twenty you know and I got some basketball shorts on yeah this is me twenty four seven almost and, and it's, it works and you know what the interesting thing is a lot of people don't realize at the end of the day you're just dealing with people. Right. People are people, whether they wear suit and tie, whether they were fitted, whether they have earrings, tattoos, they're just people. And at the end of the day, if you can talk to them, that's what matters. You know, what's funny. So I had my ears gauged before I started at AT&T and I was rep. And then I was like, I want to be a manager. And I had a guy, his name was Emmanuel Satuka. Right. He was he was the manager I went to go work for at the store I went to. And he told me, if you're going to move up, you got to take your gauges out. I took them out, dude. They closed up 100 percent. Right. And um 
I, I realized about a year and a half ago, I said, dude, I'm making more money tatted up all over my arms. I didn't want to go to work because I had this tattoo for my son on my yeah. arm. Right. And I thought they were going to say something, dude. Now they don't even care. Like, yeah, yeah do whatever. As long as you're pr- being productive and it's crazy that people still see that stuff and they're like, that's not going to be a productive person. Like, dude, I got a, I, I got a job offer one time and didn't even FaceTime someone. Like we didn't even see each other face to face. They didn't see my photo. We just had a conversation on the phone and they threw me a job offer. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I'm glad things are changing and I'm glad like this idea of professional. At the end of the day, it's like you do your jobs, you do it well, you do right by your customers. That's really what it comes down to. I, I think I think people just want people to be happy more than anything. Right. And I think there's there's studies that back the happier your employees are, the better their work life balances, the more productive they are. And I think that's why we have more remote work and we have things like this. And I think when you see companies that are going back to office, I think they've just spent too much money on a lease and are trying to justify the cost, you know, or yeah. can't get out of it or whatever. Right. So and yeah. that's whatever. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes it's just about control too, right? Oh, like yeah. I think a, a lot of, see, a lot of people who are higher up, they, they grew up in a different environment. They grew up when diff, office politics is different, right? That yeah. you have different power over employees when they're remote, like you versus in person. I talked to my old manager at AT&T to this day and he's like, yeah, man, he, he offered me a job a while back and he goes, but you got to come to office. And I said, dude, benefits are great but like i'm gonna i'm gonna lose so much time yeah i'm gonna go to the office having to deal with traffic having to possibly wreck my car gas yeah. wear and tear like no i could do more sitting here for like three hours and then enjoying my day like yeah you, you get so much pro- more productivity out of me man but yeah. you know it's you I, look you can't change some people it's no just how 100%, they think. man you, you just you're Companies are going to realize when they're losing top talent, because again, if people want to go to offices, that's fine. Have the option. Yeah. But I mean, I have friends I talk to all the time that quit their job because they're like, I can go get something working from home. Yeah. Why can't you? We got phones. We got, we got everything to do our tools. Heck, they got stuff that'll watch your screens. Now you'll probably go to Amazon and find something to move your mouse around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't, you know, it's just. I think there's a lot of people that fall into the, I'm a manager. I got to micromanage for eight hours a day when the reality is, and I did that. I was guilty of it. Right. I, I had reps that probably thought I was the biggest POS manager ever, which we since became friends. And I feel good about that. Right. Yeah. But dude. I mean, there's just only so much you can do for people. Is what I found out. Right. Yeah. And I've learned more about the bell curve and I, I, I found out that there's more, there's a lot of people on the left side, right? And when they come to work, that that's where they lie. And that's fine. You just have to move them a little bit. You can't expect right-sided behavior out of, you know, the other side sometimes. And it's fine. Yeah. And I think that's important as a manager to know because, look, some people are just going to produce differently or some people are going to produce more. Some people aren't. But you set the expectations. You you have different things and that's perfectly fine. Dude, it's, it's the same thing with people who are... Um, like, okay with just making a little, like, just making a living is what I'll say, right? Like, dude, I wish I could be happy with just making a living, right? I'm not, right? Like, I always have to be thinking. My brain's always running. You know, we have the After Hour Hustle Slack channel, right? We got almost, we're sitting at, like, almost 180. In I'm that. supposed to join that. You're supposed to be there. So is everyone else that, re- that watches this, Hold right? Up. Send me the link. Got to send I me the link. Put it on there. But... It's just, it's, it's funny how many people I see that are in there and they're like, I want out. I want out of the matrix, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and it's funny how bare minimal knowledge you really need to just put yourself in a better position that. No. Yeah. It's, it's just about, you know, being consistent, doing the right thing, surrounding yourself with the right people. So mm-hmm. you work, you know, from, yeah. for the telecom industry and then you got a job at a startup. You know, how is that? Uh, well, I'll tell you this. I had a really good resume, so that helped, right? Uh, it's all in the positioning. Um, but, dude, it was night and day difference, man. I showed up the first day. Well, I'm bald now, but I had my hair, you know, all gelled up. I yeah. had the nice, you know, collared shirt on. I had no yeah. goatee. I didn't have my gauges yet, right? I was sitting there printing them pro- proper, bro. And uh, 
I get on there and our and our CRO is like, what the fuck's up, everybody? I was like, all right. So like, that's what's going down, you know? <laughs> and it was just eye open. I was like, holy shit. Like, oh my God. Um, and it's, it's funny because like, I just, I, I spent so much time making sure I looked appropriate, making sure, dude, I used to have to send reps home because they would smell bad, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, like, just, just this image. And at the end of the day, they're like, dude, image is one thing, but like, we care about software that performs. If you can show me software that performs, like, who cares? Right. And I'm just like, all right, that makes sense. So it, it really put the imprint on me that like, it's not, it's not what, where you're from, what you, whatever it is that you produce. Yeah. And that was the big thing for me. It, it was eye opening. Okay. No, it's, it's all about producing. Now, what skills that you had from before from working telecom translate over and what did you have to learn new? I think the biggest skill that I got, um, and I got it from car sales, actually, um, that went into telecom and came into here. It's just, it's, it's the good old, you know, ABC always be closing, right? Like, and, and forever I thought that meant always chase the check, right? But it doesn't, it, it, it's in every little thing. You're always closing something somewhere. Or, and, and basically if you're thinking of it linear in the fact that I'm always making sales, I'm always, you know, you're going to, you're going to think wrong. You have to think of it as you're always finding an answer to a question, mm. right? Like if it's, Hey Ryan, I need, you know, I need this done by four o'clock or whatever, right? Like, well, what is it? Like that's, you got to close on what are we talking about? What does that look like? What does being done mean to you? You know, um, because there's lots of ways people interpret things. And if we're not on the same level, if we're not setting proper follow-up, if we're not like, you're just going to fail. Right. So there's other ways to close in life besides, Hey, do you want to buy today? Right. Like, it, it goes a long way. And I just remember, dude, getting yelled that at me at the car lot, man, go close on, go close. Dude. And I was like, what does that even mean, dude? And I thought forever it meant just get the sale right then and there. And I, I've thought about it. I've tweaked it. I've, I've learned from it. And transparently, dude, it's just, there's so many other applications for it. Yeah. It, it helps you in, in communication and doing things. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a skill that you have to learn to master. What are some mistakes that you made along the way? What haven't I messed up? I mean, I feel like I feel like I make mistakes every day, man. Um, some of the biggest ones are probably thinking I knew it all when I didn't, right? Or looking at someone's resume, background, or whatever, and thinking there's no way this person can teach me something. What was something? Wait, hold up. What was something interesting that someone taught you that you're like, this person cannot teach you anything? You're like, I'm fixing. So I'm fixing. I'm fixing to get into that, right? So um, I have a a guy. Um, his name is Tim, right? I, I, I posted about him on my page. It's my boy, right? Um, I actually taught him how to run a cleaning business, right? And so for a while there, I was like, I, you know, he started putting up big numbers. He's doing really big things. Like y'all got, you gotta check him out. Like he's, he's solid. I love Tim to death, right? Well, he started telling me about a different way to actually pay the people that would increase profit margins. I was like, there's no way you know this, Tim. You've only been running yeah. your business like two months. Blah, 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 right? I didn't know much about him besides that he was also a soft, like a software salesperson, right? Yeah. Well, then like fast forward, I find out dude's got two masters, right? Didn't know that shit, right? Like, and what he was talking about was right. Like, and I finally looked at it. I was like, oh my God, I'm, le I'm leaving so much money on the table when I could just do this. And now we've implemented it and it's been, it's been great, man. We pay, we pay them a little bit differently. They still get paid really, really good. I mean, hell I got cleaners making 25 bucks an hour. So if anyone wants some money, let me know. I'll pay you. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I'm, yo, that's a good rate, man. Dude, but they were making like 40 an hour previously. Right. And I didn't realize it until Tim broke it down for me. And I was like, Oh crap, I am hemorrhaging money on this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. You have to kind of, you know, do what's right for your business. So how has sales changed over time? Dude, sales is constantly changing, you know, and, and I'll tell this for anyone watching out there. There's no method in the world that's the that's 100 percent bona fide. Like it's the it's the one. Right. Like I think I've been trained in like Sandler and a few other ones that I just forget the name. I only know Sandler because Adam Sandler's the goat. Right. Um, and I know well, there's medic and med pick medic, and med pick. Uh, Dude, I don't know, man. There's so many. Yeah. And dude, I've had interviews. Listen to this, man. I've had interviews that have denied me 
because I didn't know the acronym for medic off the top of my head. Who who knows it? Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's like who? denying a software engineer because they don't know what API stands for. Dude, I was like, all right, like, have fun with it, right? And then and then I went to, you know, to Seamless, dude, and ended up make. I think we did my first eight months or so at Seamless, we did over a, uh, over a million dollars in ACV, if I'm wow. not mistaken. If not, I was damn close, right? Like within within fifty thousand. Yeah. So like it's it's just crazy to think that like there's these companies, and this is for everyone to know. Like you're gonna you're gonna interview with people, you're gonna talk to people, and they're gonna make you feel like shit. You don't know these little things, right? This one company cares about. Um, I'm not gonna say the company's name, but there was one company I really wanted to go to for a while, and they had a really good comp structure, but they were all medic, right? Like that was a thing. And now they're laying them off in groves, right? So, like, just because it seems shiny and then you let them put you down doesn't mean they have their shit together. There's always somewhere better for you. And that's that's the thing that I've, I've, I've learned and, and keeps me on a happy note every day. Because I know that my talent to, talents will be used somewhere else and we'll make a shit ton of money together. So, you know? if someone wants to break into sales, like, what would you say? Like, what book should they start reading? What things should they start focusing on? Um... First off, I'm not a big reader. I'll throw that out there, right? I think the first thing you need to learn how to do is sell yourself, though, right? And I think Alex Hermosi's $100 million offer is the best way to do that. Um, yeah. Because, and I think you, you've seen me talk about this. Uh, I love marketing. I am a salesperson that loves my marketing because I hate cold calling, right? So, like, Alex Ramosi's book is all about marketing and offering, right? So if you're a salesperson, you have to understand, or if you want to break into sales, whether it's SDR, sales leader, management, whatever possible, you have to build an offer that is you. I got to have an offer that is Ryan, right? And that book really helps you get the perspective of what that looks like, whether you're working for somebody else or you're going to go start your own agency, whatever you could possibly want to do. So like, I like that book. And then second off, start following software leaders. Like, you know, um, or you mean sales leaders? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sales leaders in the software space. I mean, you know, like, like Brandon, shout out my CEO, right? Like Brandon Bornanson, like he's a great person to follow. He's a genuine person. He just says it like it is right. Um, there's, you know, tons of people that you can follow and learn from and see what they're talking about. And it's not even like you you care so much about their posts. It's the people in the posts, right? So, like, you want to find people you resonate with, right? I'm not going to follow the person on LinkedIn or connect with them that all they do is talk about their product seven days a week. I don't care about that. It's, it's ungenuine, right? I want to talk about, you know, I talk about, I made a post about cars the other day. Yeah, right? yeah I saw that. Right? Cars, running, running side hustles, whatever, like. Find what resonates with you in those people because they're going to show themselves, right? And build your brand around that. Like, that's what I'd say. I freaking love that. I freaking love yeah. that. Now, looking back at your career, what would yeah. you say is your biggest accomplishment? Probably dropping out of college. Like, um, because if I wouldn't have dropped out and I wouldn't have burnt out and done all this, all the things that I thought I was at rock bottom for, right? Um I wouldn't be where I'm at today, dude. Like I wouldn't have my company. I wouldn't have my, my four kids. I wouldn't have my wife. There's, there's some shit that like, seems like it's the worst thing possible, you know? Cause I felt so bad when I dropped out of college. Right. Like I was like, I just pissed away, you know, $10,000 for this first year. I went to a community college, right? I didn't go to the college, right? Um, I felt so bad about it, dude. I felt bad about it, but the reality is it was, it was a great experience for me. Yeah, I think so. Look, again, that your failures really teach you a lot. So how'd you recover from that? Like feeling that rock bottom? Uh, I felt like shit for a long time. Um, transparently, it's been like a year just kind of finding myself and seeing where I fit in. And I played a lot of video games. I, I stayed in my, my room a lot. Like I, I, I really sheltered and reclused myself, dude. So like 19 to 20, I don't remember much because I sat inside of a room and just let depression and anxiety eat at me. And then I got a job at Best Buy um, and I found love in sales again. It, it just it, 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 it's, you know, fun stuff, bro. 
let's talk about sales at Best Buy because a lot of people don't realize that that's a good entry level job to like learn the basics. And I've done several resumes for people who Dude, have done sales at Best Buy. There's some fucking sharks at Best Buy. Bro, like that's what people don't understand is there's some sharks at Best Buy, dude. Because back in the day, they used to have an appliance. I forgot the name of it. But those yeah. appliances, they were like the reps were getting like 5% of it, you know? Yeah. So you run up a $3,000 bill at 5%. That's, you know, that's a semi-decent check. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, dude, they would just sling credit apps and, dude, it was ruthless. And I had never been in an environment like that. And I was like, what the heck? That was huge, man. Yeah. So it's, it, there's been a lot, man, like uh, uh, bouncing around at different companies, doing different things. But, you know, it, it, cause like I said, out of college, we, we did, you know, I did the car lot and then I kind of like had to, uh, I don't know, like detox myself from the situation. And that's when I went through a little bit of depression and found Best Buy and then, it, it, a little bit of everywhere, bro. A little bit yeah. of everywhere. How was it working for a big company? Like you find, you know, you broke in without a college degree, you know, at a place like HubSpot. How was it working at a place like that? It was cool. Um, tons of imposter syndrome. I'll tell you that. I felt like I didn't belong there, like uh-huh. at all. Right. Um, but then when I'd look on the scoreboard and see where I place versus the dude that's got, you know, a bachelor's degree from a prestigious university, it made me realize like, I do belong there, you know, uh, plus it's a little bit of like Northern and Southern thing, you know, like where, where HubSpot's located yeah. at, what is that? Uh, Massachusetts or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. like they're definitely different from me. I have, I have a little twang in my accent and I'll have a kid run around in the background in underwear sometimes, you know, like we just do a little different down South, right? They were definitely yeah, more yeah. prim and proper than anything I was used to. Right. Like I just, I had to, I had to, I had to watch how I talked sometimes and not throw so many y'alls and be casual. And I had to be direct of like, this is what I need from you. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You know, let's talk about like, how was it starting businesses? Cause it's like sales is already a high pressure job because you got to meet your quotas and all that. How is it running a business on top of that? And how do you manage both? I manage it without sourcing truly and truthfully. Um, I have two VAs out of the Philippines, Mark and Alexa. They're great. They basically run the show when I'm at work. And then whenever I clock out, you know, around four central, I I handle the rest. My wife helps some. But starting it, super stressful at first, right? Like I spent this money to start this business that I could have used for other things. But since starting my business and now I went from not being a homeowner to being a homeowner. Um, I purchased, you know, my, my nice $60,000 Audi out there. Right. Like I, I don't like flexing on that, but like that's, that's growth is what that is nice. to me because before the Audi came $20,000 in debt that I hadn't paid off yet. And then I got paid off. I got out of debt and, you know, so like there's things that come with the struggle, you know, and, uh, I always hear talked about analysis by paralysis, right? That got me so many times. I'd start a business. I'd want to start a business. The next thing you know, I'm just like, what do I do? Like, like, like what, what's next? What's next? What's next? And the reality is, like, if I would just start, I, I, I'd do well. And that's what happened. I finally just started. I ran the ad, started taking phone calls, and started having conversations, and then running the show. Just start. I tell people, so many people, they're worried about being perfect. They're worried about doing this. They're worried about doing that. It's like there are people without websites who are closing big deals because they just move forward. At the end of the day, can you solve someone's problem? You can always make things nicer over time, but at the end of the day, they're paying you to solve a problem. They're not paying you to have a website. They're not paying you to all that. Are all those things helpful? Yeah, but are they absolutely necessary at first? No. Dude, that's the biggest thing people want to do is they're like, hey, um, what should my website look like? And I'm like, dude, fuck a website. All right, no one cares about that. Present an offer, sell the offer. I, in a year and a half, my website, Cleanups Cleaning, has never got a single clean on it. We've SEO'd it. We've done all. doesn't matter. The ads matter. The prospecting. Dude, me and the VAs just posting in local groups for this matters. And we've been able to build a company from zero to about 30 to, I think we're on track um, for next, well, this month, right? I told you we just, we took a little hiatus, started back up on Saturday. From Saturday to today. 
Um, this this bill this bill just came through. It was four thousand dollars. So it's that three days, four grand, in one small city in Texas, right? So you do the math on that. But we're hoping to hit forty thousand next month. Is the goal? And I know you'll hit it, man. You're 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 a hustler. Now, well, let's kind of. I'm gonna ask you something interesting. Let's go. You see eighteen year old Ryan walking across the street. What do you tell him? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that. Some people aren't going to agree with, and that's fine, right? First thing I'm going to tell them is to sober the fuck yeah. up right now. Um, that's, like, the biggest thing. I, um, Yeah, be like, hey, bro, sober the fuck up. Um, invest in Bitcoin, right? Um, yeah, I think, so too. I think that's a good one. Yeah, that would have been the shit back in the day. Or just, like, hey, eventually there's going to be something called Dogecoin. Just throw, yeah. like, 300 bucks at it, man. Like, trust me, you know? <laughs> Um, but if I had to like sincerely like tell myself something back then, it would have been learn how to do arbitrage, like learn business arbitrage, learn deal arbitrage, learn how to find something that somebody is doing for cheap and sell it for more and then be the middleman. Because that's what I do with a cleaning company is I find cleaners that are getting paid less by other people. I pay them more and I charge more. So I take the money, I pay them, keep the rest. That's all. That's all it is. People ask me, "What's a clue?" That's it. That's it. I would, I would, I would spend an hour teaching myself how to do that. No, that's important. I think so many people don't realize they. A lot of people undervalue themselves, and they don't realize that if you have a business and you pay people well, you treat them right, you take care of them. Now they don't have to go find their own things, right? They don't have to manage that. Some people don't. A lot of people who don't want to do that. Yep, that's it. At the end of the day, man, you just. It, it it's the little bitty people skills, bro. Like it, it's as simple as talking to someone for 10 minutes and talking to someone else and say, Hey, do you want to do this for this much money? Yeah. Cool. Love it. Now, what are your future goals? I'm 31. So transparently, uh, I'm wanting to quit, uh, working for other people. The biggest issue has been insurance, dude. Insurance is just expensive, man. Yeah. You got a family. I got so. four kids and a wife. So like, it, it's expensive. Um, I think for me, it's retire by 40 from 31. You'll hit that. I, I don't mean like sell my businesses. I mean, like I want everything automated and I want to have about five to 10 businesses doing anywhere from like a hundred thousand to like $150,000 a month consistently. No, nah, look, you got, you got the work ethic. You got the hustle. Dude, I'll go, I'll go open three cleaning businesses in the same city, man. I don't care. Like, we're going to figure it out. I'm going to get that money one way or the other. Now, what advice would you have for people who are starting their sales career or people who are looking to move up and get promoted? Um, Be yourself. Um, Depending on the company, um, transparently, there's some companies you just have to be a brown noser to move up, right? Like, and that sucks. But don't lose yourself in doing so, Right. Cause nobody, nobody likes that. You're just going to be unhappy with yourself. That's, that's kind of how I got my management position at AT AT&T and ended up hating it for a while. But, um, be curious, right? I think it's the biggest thing. Always be looking, you know, five steps ahead. What's next look like and, you know, kind of go from there. Man, I freaking love that advice. And you know what? Honestly, I've been witnessing a, a certain portion of your journey, man. And you're putting that work, you're learning, you're networking, you're putting yourself out there and you're doing all the right things. So I know you're going to smash your goals. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing, too, is once you figured out, you know, we talked about earlier out of the matrix, right? Whatever. Once you figured out that you can make your own money or you can do your own thing, you have a skill that will always be in demand. Your I don't give a fuck meter is like hot, bro. Like, yeah, because I care. Right. So there's a difference between caring and not giving a fuck, right? There's a total difference. I care about what I do. That's why I do it. But if I didn't care, I wouldn't do it. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know if I lost my job tomorrow, if I got a call tonight from my boss and said, Hey Ryan, I saw what you put on LinkedIn, I don't like it, they would never do that, right? But if that happened, right? Something childish like that, right? Or whatever the situation is, I would be upset and then I'd find a new job. Or I'd go do my own thing. Right. And once you have that confidence, once you have that skill, whatever it is that, you know, you're the best at that you can. Again, Alex Ramosi, that shit, you know, that's your offer. You're set for life. Nothing else matters. I love it. 
How would people support you and what do you want to promote? Um, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a laid back guy. I like helping other people. I think, you know, that's my biggest thing, man. I can't, I, I don't even know how many, you know, I, how many of, uh, resumes I've said, Hey man, I'll pay for them. Or, Hey, can you, you know, do this for me? I, I, I don't have. To. Yo. And for someone in the crowd, this man sends me a referral every month <laughs> and has consistent, like every month I know, Hey, I'm going to at least have one client. Cause Ryan's sending them my way. Yeah, um, I think the biggest way you can support me and like what my journey in life is, is just by helping other people, like not give a homeless person five bucks. I mean, still give them five bucks if you have it. Right. But like do something life changing for somebody. Right. I have about 10 different people inside of my cleaning course that I've given it to. Right. Three have taken action and don't ever need to work for somebody else. again. Right. Like do something that you will make an impact on somebody that whenever your time is up with this world, that person will always remember you. That's like that's how you can help me. Because I, I know at the end of the day, if I can get you to do something that'll make that impact on somebody, then we both just made a huge impact. And I'm happy with that. Man, I absolutely love that. And what a great way to end the episode. Thank you so much for your time. So many nuggets. And I'm excited. I'm excited for you. And I'll always be cheering you on. Awesome, dude. Me too, man. I got customers texting me. So i uh, glad we were right. able to meet and do this and, you know, appreciate everybody. I'll, I'll add that Slack channel because I want to help everyone that I can reach their financial goals, their, their whatever goals in life they have to reach them and be happy because that matters the most to me. All right. I love it. Thank you for your time. Better, but... If you didn't know, now you know. Let's sing that again, everybody. No degree, no problem. Any problem, we can solve them.